I'll spend the rest of my life broken to some level. I think anybody that's lost people close to them know that. Blake Anderson knows about loss. He was at Arkansas State when his wife Wendy died of breast cancer in 2019. But in December 2020, a fresh start, hired as head coach at Utah State, found love again, and remarried. He had immediate success in Logan, going 11-3 his first year and winning the Mountain West Championship. By the end of February 2022, he and his staff had begun early preparations for the upcoming spring season. We were all in the building working. I went to his office and he had just gotten off the phone. He said they can't find Kaysen. Kaysen, Blake's youngest of three children, was living and working in Texas with Blake's older brother. He had not been seen or heard from in more than 48 hours when Blake's brother called the police to Kaysen's apartment. And the sheriff's office was outside of his door and needed permission to break it in because his truck was outside and he wouldn't answer. My brother said, we will call you back as soon as we know something. Probably the longest 20 minutes of my life. Phone rings, I get up immediately and I just shut his door in his office. And by the time I shut the door, he was uh, screaming. Um, so instantly I knew the worst thing we thought about had happened. On February 28th, 2022, Robert Kaysen Anderson died by suicide. He was 21 years old. He had demons I could not see, and he chose not to share them. And I could only imagine what he felt before he pulled that trigger. I know it's not my fault that Kaysen chose. The path they did. But I'm his dad. And I couldn't keep him safe. Like so many stunned by a loved one's suicide, Blake says he was consumed with questions and forced himself to learn more. What I quickly found was his age group is the most vulnerable. Males of his age group, uh, you know, the numbers are just skyrocketing at this point. Kaysen was 21, which is probably, you know, right at that range that his players are. So pretty much all the kids he's seeing every day are a walking, talking Kaysen. My entire career, I've been sitting in a room with 100, 150 of them every day. If he's at a high risk, then those guys are too. It slaps you right in the face like, wow. How have I been that blind and naive to you know, what's right in front of me? Just days after Kaysen's death, Blake says he knew he needed to be honest about the depths of his grief with the young men on his team. Eyes on me. One, two, three. Good morning. Good morning. Ready to go? Yes, sir. What he didn't know was how important that decision would prove to be. If I can't share my brokenness and my vulnerability, then how can I expect these guys to do the same? That kind of helped us knowing, you know, we all got to be there for one another, not knowing that tomorrow's promised. He's also been that person that he tells us that we can go to him for help as well. Aggie's defensive tackle, Seni Tuiaki, was one of several players who approached Anderson and shared his struggles. Dark, dark, I would say suicidal thoughts. All you're thinking about is just how you just want to just finish life. I walked up to his office and knocked on his door and walked in and told him everything. He was sad, he was broken, and he was willing to ask for help. And we were able to get it for him pretty quickly. Last season, then Utah State defensive back Jamie Nance also reached out to his coach in his darkest moment. 
I just felt worthless. I just felt empty, like no emotion at all. As I was taking out the a pistol, that's what it was, not a millimeter. I was just sitting there on the edge of the bed, like it'll only take a second. I won't feel it. I knew from that moment I needed to speak up. He started using the word suicide and dark thoughts, and obviously, at this point, red flags, you know, everywhere for us. We were able to get him help within 24 hours. When I ran to him, it was open arms, love, and just nothing else in that moment. I mean, he's battling it himself, but He'll bring you aside and battle it with you, whatever you're going through. The Anderson's home overlooks the valley that cradles Utah State's campus. Surrounded by these mountains that seem to touch the heavens is where Blake says he feels closest to his son. I can sit up there and just talk to Kason. I tell him I love him. I tell him I miss him. And I tell him I'm sorry. I needed to find purpose in the pain and show people also if you're struggling, it is okay to be broken. It is okay to ask for help. And if it's avoidable, if it's possible, to stop it before it gets to that point. Now we gotta do everything we possibly can to keep it from happening. Give me something fine.